everyone, I'm Cheryl Hung. Hello, I'm Lin Zhang from Hello, I'm Lin Zhang. 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 Good afternoon, I'm Yin Chong. I'm uh, from Tihu360 and I also specialize in container technology. So first question to each of you. Can you describe your project? Can you describe your project? Well, I will uh, introduce in English, in Chinese. Well, our cloud native program actually it is uh, frequently used, no matter the container or non-container. Also, like the Kubernetes container and etcd. Also, some non-container. We also will use the like etcd or TIKV. And that's we also use those, uh, and it has been run for a long time. So for the container and non-container, we use them for about two years, because for large-scale utilization, actually we updated from a very old version, and in that very old version, we have some modification or some development, and this lead to that. Uh, in the old version, the ATC, there will be big changes and difference. So first, maybe we are not able to update it. And the second, when we are using these softwares, some applications, they cannot update themselves also. And so our solution is to fork a complete version into our company so that we can use the version in our company to update it and to up upgrade it but we should not uh, change the source code actually because it is of a large sum of work and future uh, in its scalability actually it performs quite well so yeah this is the brief introduction well, I will also briefly introduce it. Uh, actually, in Alibaba, I specialize in container, and also we begin in previous years. And in previous years, we already finished the transformation of the program in Alibaba, and we have accumulated some experience. For example, Sigma, it is also container-based. It is a, a scheduling or orchestrator. Well, in recent years, we are trying to uh, make the uh, make the system more cloud native and to migrate it. And during the migration, we also encounter some challenges. Maybe the biggest challenge is the scalability or the performance of the Kubernetes. But when we are actually transform it. Maybe uh, mainly it is about the matching of the upstream, the ecosystem, like the paths, also the developers in their processes. They may encounter some, some challenges. So we do, without uh, changing the cloud native system, we, uh, we need to cope with these challenges. And the second is how to maintain about its development and maintenance and its scalability. Uh, even if you do not violate the source code, you can also use it. But the problem is how to maintain it, especially in Kubernetes. And in Alibaba, we have thousands of hundreds of nodes. So how to control it without impacting on our business? So in development and maintenance, we encounter a lot of challenges.
And in our company, mainly Huawei, uh, since 2013, we began working on the PaaS project. And now we also uh, have part of the cloud native technologies. Well, actually, its earliest version um, at that time. Inspiration has high accomplishment, but overall, uh, it has low customization. So since 2014, we migrated to Kubernetes. And during this process until now, we have the, uh, served the private cloud, a large number of clients, and the public clouds, as well as public clouds. So in early days, uh, we encounter some problems. For example, for some traditional use, so traditional customers, they have special requirement for the distribution, the allocation. For example, uh, they should be distributed on different nodes. And in terms of the network, they hope that the traditional design uh, can be separated or be split on different control planes according to different requirements. So at that time, what we mainly uh, worked on is on the upstream, we enhance our scheduling capability, including the affinity in order to complement the uh, scheduling cap capability of the upstream. And in terms of the network, uh, it is pluggable so that we can realize our multi-control planes. We also have CNGini. That is an open source, the third party plugin software, and it can realize our multi-planes. So most of the time when we serve our clients, we find that when migrate to the upstream, they maintain their old mentality, and they cannot accept the new ideas of the Kubernetes. They cannot uh, quickly uh, acquainting the technologies of the Kubernetes. So we need to ensure, on the one hand, the product and technology, but on the other hand, we also need to promote the Kubernetes. So I myself is organizing some online training and offline training to promote the cloud native technology. Well, hello, everyone. I come from Jingdong. Actually, in Jingdong architecture, uh, it it has begun in 2014, and we began to use Docker and the OpenStack. So after devel its development, after several years, and you may notice that these years are the time for fast development of e-commerce, and that's give us posted new requirements for our bottom architecture. For example, the scalability and the application. We also evaluate mm, some similar orchestration solutions. So finally, in 2016, finally, we select Kubernetes as our solution. So since 2016, since that time, maybe uh, only very few people use Kubernetes in 2016. So we are the pioneer to try the Kubernetes. And during the whole process, we also encountered a lot of problems. For instance, we need to have customized things to follow the development, internal development process. In addition, then, uh, the scheduling problem, also the resource utilization. So later we have some optimization and some improvement. Until 2018, in Jingdong, most of the production they are run on the Kubernetes cluster. So at present. In our enterprise, we already stepped on to the second stage of Kubernetes. So now mainly we focus on how to improve the resource utilization. And currently, because Kubernetes has its own schedulers, but we also have some research and development for customization. And we have our own algorithm added in in order to improve the bottom resource utilization, to improve the bottom architecture. 
and things have been proved that we largely improve our resource utilization. And in the past one year, in the 618 Festival, the fundamental architecture of Jingdong has nothing to be added, but our actually our business is, is incremental, and it is uh, even much larger than our previous business. Also, one more thing that I want to share with you is recently we have Triple FS, that is a new open source software, and it is a system distributed system, and we use it to solve. The problems encountered in our production. So sometimes maybe non-state application is quite ideal, but uh, actually in production, in our application during production, we need to store the data. So that means we have a requirement for the long-term storage. So based on these requirements and these demands, we come up with the Chuba FS project. Also, we gained a lot from this project, and since March, it has just open uh, become open source in March. I also discussed this with Li Xiang, and it is still at its initial stage and still much space for improvement. But we want to borrow some uh, forces or some power from the community to strengthen this project, and we invite more partners and enterprises. And to CTO, uh, 原生技术的这些首席技术官来说呢，你们觉得这些不同的架构它的优点和缺点是什么？比如说私有云、公有云，还有混合云这样，还有多云平台。Um, because for the scenarios, the private, public, multi-cloud, and hybrid cloud, because uh, we have our KPI clusters, many KPI clusters. Well, actually, uh, not all the applications are on the cloud. Some of them are on VMs. So currently, uh, we have the container and the VM. Also, we have the host. About the public cloud, so from my own perspective, if you have a large number of businesses or if you have wide customers or clients, actually, uh, you do not have the rank in every city, right? So when you have the such demand, you need to uh, purchase the rank from the local uh, suppliers, and you need to schedule so that you will uh, have the, pub the demand for the public racks. So that means for a long period of time, you will utilize the private cloud, public cloud, and multi-cloud uh, hybrid situation, hybrid state. So about the selection, I think it largely re depends on your uh, business, the size of your business. But if your clients are in only one city or one province, maybe only one rack is enough. But if your applications are quite perfect, and you can also put it on the physical host. Yeah, so that depends on your si the size of your business. Well, I myself think the public cloud is the future trend. So in future, maybe most of the enterprises would use the public cloud or public cloud services more or less. For private cloud, uh, maybe if you focus on security or some uh, uh, and it will put it in the private cloud because it takes time and energy to put it on the public cloud. So under such circumstances, you will also consider the hybrid cloud architecture and how to integrate the private and migrate between the private cloud and public cloud. Also for some uh, mutable or elastic data, and how to uh, realize the cost saving to be cost efficient and reduce the cost. I think all these are the factors that need to be consideration taken into consideration. About the multi-cloud, maybe uh, at present, most enterprises they will select only one cloud. For example, the Ali. Cloud.
about, but in order to negotiate or have a backup, they may also uh, apply or adopt some services in other clouds. For example, some enterprises like Twitter in North America, they will adopt such strategy, and they will not be bounded to uh, log in. Approaches, as I mentioned, is according to your own business need. But the overall trend is to develop to the uh, public cloud. Well, this showcases the advantages of a cloud native. And many architecture are started from the layers of the cloud native, and they can integrate the cloud provided services and the uh, and the capacity, and it's kind of a universal API, so it can uh, it can better migrate the state service and the non-state service on the architecture. So the native cloud can release the pressure or the workload on this. Well, just. Uh, uh, Li Xiang give a pre uh, detailed introduction and will add some points. What for the gap? Actually, Kubernetes has already become the a standard specification of cloud providers. But no matter whether you adopt the distribution version or multi cloud provider deployment, actually, the cross cloud cluster management has already. Uh, has not been unified. Has not does not have a unified standard. So, if the combination becomes increasingly more complex, then the cluster management cost will become higher accordingly. Besides, for the running time on the cloud, actually, for the open source industry, actually, have already provided the cross cloud migrate. Uh, migration, including for the application layer, it can help you to achieve the multi-cloud, multi-task network connection. And for this application or client, it does not need to worry about the communication network on the lower layer. So actually, for the connection. Of various network, do we need to public or dispose all the information on the public cloud? This is quite a concern, and it's quite difficult to achieve. And this is a relatively big gap. So besides, for your business, if they have the migration across the clouds, the data become a more prominent problem. So data flow is quite important. Most often. We choose to insist on the private cloud, although some cal calculation uh, are on the public cloud. Or we insist on in uh, using one uh, public cloud because we have the data quality. So we have a mass amount of data, but it cannot freely flow among different clouds. So this is a gap for the using of private cloud or public uh, cloud or multi-clouds. So in the mixed architecture or framework, can you use a mature uh, program or solution to address that? For now, the industry have some also provided the data flow among multi-clouds. Actually, this is a big gap currently. My previous guest has made a rough uh, a very detailed introduction, actually. I will skip some details, and I would like to share some experience I learned from a case study. Currently, for the older infrastructure, contains private cloud and data updating. So most applications are deployed on the private cloud, based on Kubernetes. And on this unified platform, well, some basic inf uh, software, for example, the middleware, <coughs> file document system, and a database, image database, key value database, 
But these lower layer applications actually did not achieve. They are not deployed on the cloud. Actually, they deployed on our DC. What I want to say here is that the, to put on the cloud actually is not will not be achieved on a single day. Actually, it's quite a long and hard journey, and we also need to adopt that according to our business development and our demand. Actually, this status requires a high requirement on your applications. So I just share the case and for your reference. Do you consider service meshes a service mesh? Do you consider service meshes and IT is ready for this kind of IT? Why? Why do you think so? Mm. Well, for source mesh and service list, I believe it, they have many practice and researches on this as, uh, area. Well, I personally believe this technology is still in the early stage for the development uh, process and the maturity. Uh, is need to be improved. Well, actually, we have done some tests. I'd like to share that for our e-commerce platform, the performance of service mesh and service list is need to be further improved. And besides, for the operation complexity, I think it's not simple enough to support the operation. For your reference. Well, I'd like to share other experience. Well, for the service mesh and service list, actually, we have done very deep uh, study of that. For service mesh, we support more, including the East East community upstream investment. Actually, we are the earliest uh, investor in East East community. Well, actually, some new emerging questions and the scenario are not, are not that sensitive. And I believe the evalu evaluation is necessary for a large scale company, but for the early attempting, actually, the user will quite. Uh, uh, we're quite cautious about that. He will first migrate the least sensitive data to that. Well, for listing, have one advantage that it needs does not need to deployment on Kubernetes. So, for some scenario, when you do the business modification on the Kubernetes, you have one more option that you can first do the microservice modification, so that it can better. Better connecting the service on the Kubernetes and service on the original platform. And this is adopted by many people. Well, for service meshes or service lists, one of the major problem is that it is not a, it's not that mature on the open source. In my uh, as my. I recall that last year it released the 6.0 version. So many clouds does not have the unified version of that, or have or does not support for that. Well, last year the Kinetic was launched, and many platforms started. To modify the service list according to the Kubernetes, so for now the service list needs time to develop to have more development. Well, the matter for service meshes or service lists, the ultimate goal is to migrate the concern of the original development to infrastructure la layer. 
and all these pressures, all the work and efforts need to be done by the infrastructure la layer. This is the uh, ultimate trend or ultimate goal of that. Well, actually, we want to redu reduce the capacity of the middleware to the infrastructure layer so that we can have a better management and have a better support for multi uh, services. Well, for one of the great challenges for service mesh, as you mentioned by a colleague from Jindong, uh, actually, the model that actually increases the pressures, especially for the set card, when updating the set card is not as easy as updating the, the other midware. Well, for the public cloud, when you do the service mesh, it's, it's already mature on the public cloud. <coughs> like Alibaba or Huawei has already done that for you. For the second concern, it's about the performance. For the performance for the long term run, this will not be the problem. Since infrastructure and the engineer and other providers, they all try different ways to solve that. For, we want to help to filter capacity to lay, uh, lower to the infrastructure layer. And we use the set panel approach to deal with other issues. If we just compare them to SDN, if they can solve the uh, the issues on the network level, as you can see that SDN had not good performance, but actually many public cloud already use SAD or SLINE solutions. So first, if they can bring enough values, so the performance will definitely be improved. But for the third concern, I believe it's much more difficult to, uh, to solve that. The reduce the flexibility. So if we use a SDK pattern, to do the flow control and to run to do the runtime with different language. And the applications are quite good and the flexibility is quite outstanding. And the way you use a smash mesh approach to solve that, it actually supports more scenarios and more languages. So the flexibility flexibility can be improved greatly. So for the service mesh, how can we balance the flexibility and the pressures reduced on the development in the infrastructure la uh, infrastructure layer, uh, layer. And we want to do the flow control. <coughs> and if it can have some self-control on that, so this uh, from this aspect for the long run, it can dominate the, uh, the web market. For the service list, actually, it has a broader definition. As Zephyr mentioned, actually, it's the definition from the perspective of only one aspect. But actually, Alibaba believe it has a broader sense. That is to say, if a service can, can meet a pattern of pay on demand, then the resources can be abstracted. So these patterns can be called a service pattern. Including some other companies already provided the assembly database patterns and the payment pricing patterns, which is different from the uh, traditional pricing systems. Actually, it pricing according to the CPU cost, actually cost, which is quite flexible, and it can really uh, bring the cost e effective for the users and the convenient for users. This is the advantage of service. So for service, I believe we need to probe into which which layer can be easily be extracted and that will be easier for the users to accept. So if we just abstract the services into a different uh, layer, which cannot be accepted, then we we'll have a lot of limitations on that. Uh, but for the broader sense, we can imagine a services imagine, but it pricing uh, as per hours. So for a broader sense, it's actually a pattern or a model. So to which degree can we abstract it to that the services can better accept that and can bring more convenience for users? They have made a great uh, description and I'd like to share my idea. Well, for now, we mainly work on 
sailing and uh, safety. And for now, we still educate the users. For Series Mesh, it focuses on the infrastructure are dynamic and elastic. And besides, it also emphasizes the service should be microservice and be standard and serve the users. But for the f currently, we have not achieved microservice or serving the users. We are still on the early stage. As Kevin mentioned, actually, service mesh connect the connect the physical servers and the containers. So we want to use the service meshes can connect these tunnels. For example, we can do the service identifying and the user and the workload balancing. And we will not do the shared card. We just move them on the micro or on the framework. Or later, when these services can run on the cloud or after the mesh then it can be matured, and we will consider it later. For the serverless, for serverless, actually it does not have wide application in scenarios, because first, when it is serverless, and it requires uh, higher, it has higher requirements, higher abstraction than the service meshes. But internally, we have the uh, serverless services. For example, for some new developers, uh, because they can uh, run rapidly and they already uh, su support the elast elasticity. So I think this would be the future trend for development. Thank you very much. We are out of time. Uh,